Hey, hey, it's your girl, Dr. Tanji, and you know what day it is. It's Monday, right? And it's time for Talk to Tanji. And I'm excited. I say this every time I come on the air. I'm excited for so many reasons. One, you're here. So you're engaging with us. Two, we've got a lady on this line. Well, two ladies, as a matter of fact, but one in particular who is following directives from God. She did her manuscript. She did the work. Now we're going back and asking that proverbial question, because after all, the show is founded on kingdom principles. We're asking, how did you get here? Because when you think about writing a book, ladies and gentlemen, you think about something that's going to be labor intensive, all exhaustive. I mean, just on and on and on. But we've got a publisher that's with us that's going to tell us just a little bit of the ins and outs. But today, she's putting all of her energy and emphasis on Ramona Brown. Who said, <laughs> who said, you know what? I'm ready to do this. Unique David said, okay, I can do this. And forgive me, Unique, for not saying your proper name, please. Oh, you're okay. But, uh, <laughs> but you're okay. I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm really, really excited because what this show is designed to do is designed to just reach people where they are. It's not predicated on anything other than living out that creed of, being a kingdom citizen now and in the world to come. Yeah, we're part of this earth, so we have to do things here, but we all believe that we have purpose and we have to get that purpose out. Now, your gift is not your purpose. That's another show. <laughs> but for all intents and purposes, today we're literally going to bone by bone, Ramona is going to give us an assignment that she had from last week, right, Ramona? Uh, one excerpt from her book for the three days that she would have you journal. So if you will, Ramona, tell us just, you know, a, a brief synopsis of the book. I know you said it last week, but if you will, again, for those who was not able to join us last week, if you will, a brief synopsis of the book, then Unique is going to tell us how she plays a role in this book, and then we will get ready for next week's assignment. All right, Ramona, you got the floor. How did you get here, lady? You said so, you had written this book. God got on to you <laughs> for not doing what you were supposed to do. Yeah. So take us back, if you will, that moment when you knew that, you know what, I got to get this out of me. How did you get there? Okay. How did you, what, what took you to get pen and paper? All right. And then that assignment from last week, if you will, um, telling us that three day assignment. Uh, so yeah, God woke me up one morning and told me to finish the book. I had already started writing it, but Again, because I was dealing with some things, I was just like, nah, I don't feel like doing this. I can't do this. Because I was, again, I was angry. I was dealing with anxiety. And I was just, I had all these emotions going on. And I'm just like, I just put the book down. Again, the Lord woke me up a year or two later. You need to finish the book. And I'm like, but yeah, no, I don't want to. <laughs> but I, the way God deals with me, I could hear the sternness in his voice, but there was this still that love. And I'm like, okay, I need to write this book because you're not playing with me right now. <laughs> so I got to. Can, I, can I ask you one question, Ramona? Yeah. And, 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 and this is for people because remember, this show really talks to people on every different level, right? right. Every different dimension. And when you say God woke you up, you say, you know, his voice, you may have people. And, and again, I apologize for interrupting you, but I just want to make that clear because I don't want to lose anyone in that, in that gap, because I don't want people to think, well, it's just, you know, to hear his voice or to be that close to him, you've got to have uh, your hair pulled back in a ponytail and these long dresses and, you know, no makeup and just kind of waiting to be raptured, but that's not the case. So 
how do you know his voice? And then please proceed. Um, how do I know his voice? That yeah. knowing his voice comes from having a relationship. I had to build and cultivate a relationship with him. And when I did that, I realized that I've been hearing his voice pretty much all my life, but I just didn't realize it was him. Wow. And then Thank you. Communicating with him on a daily basis and taking the time to listen to him talk back to me, it was like, oh, I hear that all the time. I didn't know that was you, guys. So it was wow. cultivating that relationship having that relationship and again taking time to just sit and listen to him talk back a lot of times people go into prayer and i've been guilty of this going into prayer and just talking 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 okay thank you god and then getting up and walking away and not just sitting still and wait for him to respond back and i'm sure the whole time he was like but i thought we were having a conversation mm -hmm. right yeah be still and hear his voice that still small voice yeah so Thank you. That's Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, he woke me up. I pulled all my stuff back out and I realized, I didn't realize that I had gotten farther along writing the book than I thought I had. And so he gave me very specific instructions, write a topic a day, no more, no, no less. And just start writing. And I'm like, okay. And I sat there and I put together everything that I had already written. And I prayed about the topics. I had more topics than I thought I did. I have 10 topics. Each topic has three days of devotional time. And um, I prayed about the rest of the topics and he gave them to me just like that. And I sat down with each topic, got my dictionary, got my Bibles. And I just went, I just started writing. And it was actually yeah. easier than I, I thought it was gonna be. Cause I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I know that many words, guys. <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> To write a book and again he was very specific just one topic a day and I sat down and I just wrote wrote and again I was done by Thursday night Friday morning completely finished writing the book wow unique let me ask you thank you so much for more for that unique being a publisher and and and, and businesswoman in this in this arena of getting work out getting that that soulish man out to the marketplace and i say soulish right. man because most of the time when you write a book you really are writing from your soul your mind right. your your emotion your role as a publisher and i know you mentioned this last week that you know who are you to not i guess help people do what it is they believe that they are supposed to do in this space hearing ramona say what she says and what she, what she just said and knowing what arsenal you know what what tools you got in your arsenal what would you say for those who may not be as disciplined to get up and write a book in four days or finish it you know after mm -hmm. hearing that voice what would you tell the person and what, you know, what, what methodology would you use to say two, two questions, you're ready to do this. And then the second question would be, how do you kind of independently select what will be published? Well, first, what I would say is a question that I think many of us have as authors is, okay, then what? I'm going to write this. You want me to write this. And now that it's written, now what? <laughs> Either we think um, ahead of time as far as before I write, what will I do with it? Or now that I've written it, now what? And so there's a thing that called radical faith. Mm. And radical faith moves. See, there, there's faith and there, there's faith in God that believes that God will do what he says he's going to do. But we still want to know, but how, Father? How are you going to do this? What, what's going to come of this? What is it that you're going to do? And then radical faith just jumps and then says, now how do I swim? Now how do I stay afloat? And so there's, there's nothing wrong with either. There's just some times in life where radical faith is required. So for someone who is, they may have an umption. Let me say that first and foremost too. 
God's voice comes for some people they feel, they, they see, they, not everyone uh, testifies to hear the way that Ramona testifies to hear the way that I hear or you hear. Mm -hmm. So even when you, when you have that feeling, when you have that umption, when you have that, you know that this is something that you need to do or that you should be getting done, this is where you allow your radical faith to kick in and just responding to that umption, God always has, has a way. A way has already been made. It's just for us to get it done. Gotcha. Now, now as the, again, being, that being said, God, because God has a way to get it done, even before you know, even when you do not know, God has put people in place to be an answer to prayer. And so this publishing company is in place <laughs> to be an answer to prayer. And I think I said this last week, the selection process for me is simply whatever God says, wow. whoever he says, just being available for his, his voices <laughs> that he has, that he's raising up in this season, just simply being available. It's not by mistake that, that we have come to know one another. It's not by mistake. And so being, doing my part, Ramona did her part, uh, and, and my part is laying the foundation and simply being available. God himself, as I'm witnessing, is simply leading those to me who he would have me to to assist in this season. That's good. Thank you. Thank you both for your obedience. It's so, so very important. I wanted to touch on life and death being in the power of your tongue. And I say that because that's part of a principle that we really, really need to kind of be weary of, not weary, but be cautious when we're speaking. If we see, if we're in a situation or see a circumstance that look like, you know, there's nothing left to it. It's just, it's, it's, you know, the time has passed. I honestly believe that you have that power to speak life, to do something in that instant to better, you know, to have that favorable outcome. So I tell folks, if you don't want to see it happen in your life, don't speak it. If you want to see it happen, just keep speaking it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will happen. So be mindful that, you know, we've got to put a watch over our mouth. And Ramona, which is my segue to you, looking at your body of work before it became, you know, be, began to get its size and shape and form, was there ever a time when you said, and again, you may have talked on this, but for those who were not listening or were not here rather was there ever a time when you literally had to kind of invoke i gotta be careful what i speak or was that just something you didn't even you know just it didn't even cross your mind that part regarding the book didn't cross my mind because again i know that i heard from god so i'm like okay for whatever reason i have to finish this book um so the the speaking life and death regarding the book never crossed my mind because I knew something happened with this book. Again, it's been two years. Um, and even when I would think about it and I would get a little discouraged, I'm like, Nope, you woke me up and made me write this book and you didn't make me write this book for it to sit here in this notebook. So yeah, that part for me, no, never crossed my mind. Wow. So you were speaking, I'm not saying it was a dead situation, but for two years, when you hear someone say, well, I can't say anything because it's been uh, something years since <laughs> I have got mine done. But when you hear someone say, you know, for two years, you know, I just kind of labored with this or what have you, was there never a time that you looked at that situation and thought or even spoke, how am I going to get it done? You got to be kidding me. Oh, yeah. Well, how I'm going to get it done, yeah. Okay. Um, that part, yeah, absolutely. I didn't okay. know who, again, I have friends who've written books, who've self-published, who know publishers, and I would try to contact any and everybody that I could think of, and nothing would happen. And um, I got a little discouraged, but again, at the same time, it was like, nope, you may write this book, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. 
you're going to have to make it happen because I see now that whatever I'm doing is not working. So you obviously have a plan for this wow. book. Let it sit here until it's time to pull it out. I mean, you think about that, you need put faith. A lot of people right. do not operate in that kind of faith. You know, it goes right. back to that discipline. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So if you were looking at this thing in the, the, the publishing world, what steps would you say to someone? And I don't want to get too in depth because you're going to be on the Dr. Tanji show. So <laughs> <She's got to. laughs> right, but right. for Ramona's purpose, since you are consulting here, how, what would you say to someone who may not have a relationship with him? May, mm. I mean, they know of him. They know Big Mama or Grandmama or, you know, my dear talked about him. But I don't, I'm not ready for that just yet. I just want to get the book out. You know, if, if that happens, it happens. Are you opposed to, two questions again, are you opposed to working with someone who may not have faith like yours or ours? That's the first question, or maybe the second. And then two, we'll say that's the first question. The second question would be, what kind of mode of operandi would you say if you were trying to list maybe five things that a would-be or soon-to-be uh, published author should do to get their package ready for you to even take a look at? I know, two questions. Okay, that's okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to answer the second one first, if that's okay. And yes. the first thing I would say is to read and reread what you have written. Read it and reread it. Because it's, it's sometimes easy to just simply write, but not necessarily write and think as a reader. Yeah. And mm. so sometimes someone may... Um, I've had this where someone had me take a look at something they have written and they were so very proud of it. And however, but when I, once I began to edit it or take a look at it, they weren't leading the reader anywhere. It was just simply writing down thoughts or writing down situations and circumstances that happened in life. And so what I would first and foremost tell somebody prior to getting it to a publisher, any publisher, read and reread what you've written. Are you, what is your goal? Set, what is the goal for the manuscript? What is your goal? What is it that you want to achieve? What message is it that you want to send? Everyone in the world, we all have a story. And so there are some who feel like, you know, I just want to get my story out there. But even still, if you just want to write your story for you to know, for your children maybe, that's one thing. But if you want someone else to be inspired by your story, that's something different. And so it has to be in chronological order. It, it basically it has to make sense. And I hope that doesn't sound harsh, but mm -hmm. I would just read it, read it, read it, read it, read it from... Um, try to look at it from another perspective. Asking a friend or someone else to kind of take a look uh, helps. But literally prior to the publishing process, and don't get me wrong, I'm here to assist, but you want to just simply make sure that even me as the publisher being the first person, if I'm the first person to read your work, what message do you want me to get from it so that you can get buy-in from me and have my full support in pushing out your message? Wow. The, to answer the, the second, the, the, the other question, I would say that, again, I don't see, I don't see this as my company. I don't see this as my agenda. There's nothing that I do that is about unique. And so whoever, whomever God sends my way to assist, see, too many times we turn people away because they don't have the faith that we have, because they don't mm -hmm. believe like we believe and because they don't speak how we speak, because they don't look how we look. But again, we forget how we used to look and how we used to talk and how we used to speak. And so for me, any and every, uh, it, everything that I do is about who God is and who I am in him, the office that I walk in. And so 
their their journey to God, their journey to getting to know God could very well begin with me. It could begin with this simple act of love and kindness where I say, you know what, we might not, you might not be where I am, but recognizing that I haven't always been where I am. So baby, whatever I have to do to help you could potentially catapult you to your next level. And so who am I to turn anyone away? Wow. Yeah. You know, that's our show, folks. No. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> Thank you. Because I, I, I've never, I, I don't think I've heard it spoken so eloquently and so heartfelt, seriously. Um, because we, we've, we, we've, we've done a poor job on inviting people into our lives and, 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 and showing them, you know, this is what the kingdom looks like. And, you know, this, it, it, we, we've done a really bad job on that. So we, I say we, the body as, as a collective, we, we've yeah. got to do better. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Thank you so very much. That was very heartfelt. Um, I do want to ask Mona, now that you have completed that particular assignment, I say assignment because anytime you do something for God, it really does feel like an assignment, right? Um, you stated that you have started another assignment in, in your writing. Um, what are you doing differently than you did from the very first uh, manuscript, the first body of work? Um, uh, this second book is, yeah, it's a, it's a little different. I, um, <laughs> it's taking me a little longer to write this one because I keep getting all of these ideas. So I'm just writing down every day, jotting down notes, mm -hmm. changing the outline almost every day. Um, woke up the other, I had a dream the other night about the book, so I had to write what the dream was so I can make sure that I include that in the book. Um, but the difference between this, the new book and the first one is that the first one seemed like it just came together. Again, I wrote it in five days, less than a week, but this one just seems like it's taking a little more time. I think it's more deliberate, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It's a little more deliberate than the, the first one. Okay. Unique, you, you, that resonated with you when she said deliver it. I, I'm just curious to know what did you kind of garner from that particular deliberate uh, act? <laughs> um, in other words, it, it's requiring more thought on your part. Absolutely. And the one thing I want to say is no matter what, don't hold back. Oh. Because sometimes we can think too much. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when we think too much, we're not as transparent and as raw as is needed to help somebody else. Okay. Um, yeah, so because the first one was deliberate as well, but you were kind mm -hmm. of, you were in a different space. Does that make sense? You were in a different yeah. space then. And so this one can actually come together just as easily. I'm not necessarily saying it would take you just a few days, but sometimes we can overthink it or outthink. Does that make sense? And so we'll say, okay, well, and I, I'll say this too, even to kind of go back to the last question, but transparency, there's a gift in being transparent. Mm -hmm. There's a gift. And one of the gifts, it's one of the gifts that God has given me, but also a gift to discern when you're holding back. Hmm when someone is holding back. So I don't know what kind of publisher one would call me, but one thing that I would <laughs> most certainly do is push because it, and I think I said this, but I see a, being a publisher as being a midwife and we don't need just the limbs. We need the head, we need the full body, you know? And so just don't <laughs> overthink it. That's what I would say. Absolutely. I'm not saying don't ponder and don't, you know, seek God about it and, and do whatever it is that he's telling you to do. But that's one thing I'm, I, I do. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Don't outthink a, a chapter. <laughs> you know, don't, don't mm -hmm. think so hard that this, this verse, this paragraph gets left out. Just don't overthink it. I think it's a completely different body of work um, than your initial one. Um, 
but that's that's necessary as well just showing a different facet of who you are and your gifts but just don't overthink it good deal so Ramona you hear this right <laughs> all right if you will Mona would you give us our assignment from an excerpt of your book um and this particular one uh ex ex excerpt would be whatever you've chosen and it would be not only for our engagers but it would be for us or for me to just follow it for the three days we'll meet back here on monday discuss it and then move into the final, of course, appearance of, uh, on the show, but I think we lost her. I think we lost her. She'll come back. Yeah, Kay she'll Davis, come back. yeah when she gets back, then she'll give us a, our assignment. But <laughs> Unique, I am, I, 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 I am, uh, I'm thrilled. I'm excited that you're here. You're oh, yeah, walking. Absolutely. I mean, you're not only walking with Ramona, but you're walking with me in this as well yes. uh and yes. and for the others who are listening would you um tell everyone uh how they can just either drop you a line dm oh, you let them you know kind of you know how do i get in touch with this woman who has a publishing company but she doesn't act like everybody else <laughs> <laughs> i know praise god for that that's why i am unique uh, praise God for that. He, he let me know that it was him who named me. Um, I am not as active on Facebook. Uh, my husband uh, is Apostle Ron Davis, and he's on Facebook. And through there, we do have the ministry pages at GKR Ministry, which is the ministry at the place of our sanctuary, which is the local church, and also Apostle Unique David, Unique Simpson Davis. Um, I can be reached there. And then also on Instagram, I can also be reached at Kingdom Voice Publishing at gmail.com. And if anyone wants more information about the publishing company itself, you can um, find that right at kingdomvoicepublishing.com. Perfect. And we'll definitely put a link up and the information on the website at uh, www.drtanjishow.com. We'll have that information uploaded uh, this evening. So, Mona, you uh, rejoined us and you're going to give us our assignment for the next three days. Yes? Yes. All right. So I chose um, the first topic. No, actually the second topic which is anger, um, because that was a, an issue that I had. Didn't really know how angry I was until I started dealing with the anger. Mm -hmm. And I said, I was angry about a whole bunch of stuff. And again, God started pulling back the layers of the onion. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the reasons why I picked um, anger. So um, do you want me to just read the page or... How you However want you want to give it to us, whatever you want us to glean from it, where it's going to okay. be an assignment. Yep. Okay. So overcoming anger and anger, the definition for anger is a strong feeling of displeasure and usual and usually of antagonism. Um, so anger is a natural human emotion. Sometimes things happen and we become angry when people do things to us that are unpleasant or unkind or when situations get so far out of control that sometimes we don't know what to do. We have every right to be angry. So what about when you feel as if God is not listening or paying any attention to you? Um, and again, that was an issue that had me angry for a long time. I thought God didn't love me. I thought he wasn't listening to me. I would pray and wouldn't get any answers. I'm like, okay, you must really not like me for whatever reason. So that was a source of anger for me for a long time. Um, but anger is a natural human emotion um god gives us these emotions again and anger is another one of them but how we deal with it the, the scripture says be angry but sin not so god says that we can be angry but what you do about the anger is where mm -hmm. <laughs> is where you have to really gauge yourself so okay. for um day four i use proverbs verse 15 and one, the sensitive answer turns back wrath with an offensive word stirs up anger. So um, we have to recognize that there have been some issues that have caused us to be angry. And we even have to admit, sometimes if we can't admit what's wrong, we can't 
solve the problem or let God heal us, we have to be able to admit, well, shoot, I'm angry. So now I need to do something about it. So you have to determine what you're going to do about it. Um, so the first thing for day one is you have to dig deep down inside. And sometimes you don't even have to dig very far. But the first question is what has happened to you or what has someone done or said to cause you to be angry? So that that's the the pondering thought, the pondering question for day one for anger. Okay. And get into the next day, we talk about people offending us and us offending people. So then the next thing is to make a list of people that we know that we have offended. And that's hard because again, going back to what you said earlier, you need, we have to be transparent. Um, we have to be very transparent. If you can't be honest, transparent to me there's no there's no reason in trying to even read this manuscript because you have to take a real good hard look at yourself and be able to and answer the question because you can't be healed if you don't want to be Just put it away and wait for another time and it, when you're back up so the third day for anger is um now we have to try to get rid of it and um the the step is how do, the question was how do you get rid of it and then what you replace it with one of the characteristics of God and I chose joy because I think joy is the opposite of anger and um, we have to remember what His promises says about us search His word and find everything you need from His word so I listed listed some scriptures and then for the third day I just have you meditate on the scriptures and what you can and how they make you feel and so that's just a okay brief. do you mind giving giving me or giving us just a few of those just a couple a couple of those scriptures yeah, nehemiah 8 and 10 psalm 16 and 11 psalm 94 19 psalm 47 1 proverbs 21 21 uh matthew 6 and 33 James 3.18, Colossians 3.15, Galatians 5.22.23, and 1 Peter 3 and 11. That wow. Was Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This, this really speaks again to the soul of the matter because you're, this is in, this is invasive. This is really intensive. Thank you for this, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Wow. So unique. Rounding up our discussion, you see what the work is that Mona has put in. Now, your job as that publisher, you grab you, when when it's sent over to you like this what's the next step and and to realize this work making it from you know where where she where it was just that rough you know diamond mm -hmm. in the rough sends mm -hmm. it over to you you do whatever you're supposed to do to help bring forth the birthing of this baby what what does that detail just a couple of steps of what that look like well first it looks like a lot of conversation between ramona and i because my role is to realize her vision. And so you're not always able to uh, get it down the way you envision it in manuscript form. But so basically to consult with her and, and I mean from everything to how does she see it? How does she see the layout? How, do you, how did you envision this when you were putting it together? And then my role is simply to just assist her in that process. So the formatting, um, the whether, you know, the cover art, the design of the book, I want to hear from her. I tell people I'm going to listen to you and to God. Th that those are the only two voices I need to do this. And then my role is simply to make suggestions as God gives them, not because it's not my work you know what i'm saying and so i'm going to hear her i'm going to always have an ear to heaven and get it done literally just get it done just put put it together and and be able to put in her hands her finished work wow 
Wow. All right. That means that uh, we got to get over this manuscript so we can yeah. get this thing done. So that yeah. these conversations, yeah. so from start to finish, how much time would you say that a soon to be published author should allow from the time that you get their manuscript to the time that you guys are engaging in conversation? What does that look like? And in, uh, in, in time, not days, weeks. I'm months. sorry, from the time that I receive it to the time uh -huh. that it's finished. Uh huh. Yes. Oh man, I am. God is. I my my promise to you is you will have your finished work in thirty days or less. Oh, what? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you too, Mona. Right? You're like, what? <laughs> yes. Oh man, thirty days or less. This is we have got to get. You know, that's a whole nother conversation. But okay. God is redeeming okay. the time for us, and that means that we oh. have to work diligently. We have to work okay. diligently. And when God says that the time is now, and and Ramona's voice needs to be heard now, oh, there's no time to play. Okay. There's no time All to right. play. There's no time to play. Mona, have you heard that? Because you have that voice to have it. Like, like yeah. Unique was uh, given to, uh, just mentioned. You, you know that this time is now, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, yeah. then we got to get it started, Unique. We are going to hire you now, <laughs> yeah. today, and uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll get over. We'll, uh, we'll talk shop talk on camera. And uh, yeah. go ahead and get, get this started so Mona can be ready in 30 days to be a yeah. published author. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Mona. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Maybe I should have saved that for next week. That means next <laughs> week I'll be a, a, a real big closer, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, it is it is truly, man, you have no idea. I I I, I'm I'm looking for the words to really express to you how grateful I am to both of you. I'm trying to do it without tears, man. Yeah. But it's the it's the Soul Speaks series, and this is truly a uh, it's truly a blessing. It's a blessing in so many ways. It's a blessing that this woman will get her work out there that she knows that God has given to her. And she said, yes. And it's a blessing that you, woman, trust him so much to throw, to thrust you into business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who but him, right? That's to right. thrust you into business and that you're the answer to people's prayers. And I am I'm truly, truly grateful and honored to both of you. Thank you so, so very much. Um, I'm going to do my homework, Mona, and uh, I'll have it ready for next week. <laughs> but in closing, I, I, I am truly, I'm truly grateful. I am. I know I said it, but you, you have no earthly idea. That's, this is what the show is about. It's not about anything other than doing exactly <laughs> what we're supposed to do in the time that we're supposed to do it. Um, there's a lot going on, you know, COVID, we're still in the middle of a pandemic and we, we got a lot going. We can give, we could use so many excuses as to why we're not exactly where we're supposed to be. But mm -hmm. I think you said it best, Unique, when you said that he's redeeming the time yeah. So now is the time to get purposefully busy and do exactly what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That's it. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right, ladies, any last words before we thank everybody for joining us today? No, no. I'm on. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. I'm so excited. Thank you. So much. Thank you so much. Unique. Thank you. I can't talk to you. Um, oh, yeah. Later on, so we can. Well, get you're a client time. now, lady. You'll be talking. <laughs> <laughs> You'll yeah. definitely be talking to her. Um, all right, I'm gonna get myself together. That was our show, ladies. <laughs> Thank you 
you so much for, for being a part of the Talk to Tanji show. This series, the Soul Speak series, is again is something that I'm truly looking forward to doing in, in the spirit of excellence. Uh, my guest, Ramona Brown, Unique Simpson Davis of Kingdom Publishing, have uh, truly uh, shown us. Uh, boy, I, I'm, I'm trying to stop crying here, but <laughs> truly shown us that when you put pen to paper, when you really put your ear to heaven, when you do what you're supposed to do, at the appointed time, God always has someone to take you from where you want to be where you are to where you want to be, where you need to be. That's our show. Join us on Wednesday, the Dr. Tom Show on LA Talk Radio at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m., I think, was at uh, 5 Central, <laughs> 8 Eastern. And um, on Mondays, again, for the final segment of our of our Soul uh, Speak series with Ramona Brown and Apostle Unique Simpson Davis of Kingdom Publishing. Thank you, ladies. Talk to you really soon. Love you. <laughs>